Hey, what's up? I'm Allie, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the things that I read in April and May, because I thought I did an April wrap-up, and I didn't double the amount of books for me. In April, I read five things, and in May, I read seven things. So, yeah, big wrap-up, big wrap-up coming at you. Start off with uh, the first thing that I ended up reading in April was Happy Place, and this was the newest Emily Henry release, and this is about basically a couple who is no longer a couple. They are on the outs, they haven't talking, really talked to each other in months, and their friends don't know about it. And they get invited to go spend the summer at this house that they used to go to every summer, them and their friends, and it's kind of the last time they're going to get to be there. And they have to pretend to still be in a relationship for their friends. Of course, that means spending a lot of time together and kind of going through the motions of being in a relationship. And it brings a lot of sparks back and a, a lot of the reasonings why they're together in the first place. I think what I really like this is that you kind of look into them falling in love then. And it's placed beside them re-falling in love over time because you know how this type of book goes. I again always think that Emily Henry just does a really good job of really describing just like ordinary people it feels like. Catching just those moments of like silliness and naiveness and vulnerability that I feel like a lot of us go through especially with people that you love. Didn't necessarily care so much for the friend group in this one out of all the other ones just because I felt like they were such a weird friend group to me. I don't know that just the dynamic of them just felt weird. nothing that I could really connect with. Some of them were very rich. <laughs> so there was that, but I still really, really enjoyed it. It was just what I needed. I listened to this in one go. I gave it a five out of five stars. I also read, since we're talking about Emily Henry, I had read in May, People We Meet on Vacation. And again, same thing. I feel like this really captures just those ordinary feelings, those deep feelings that we feel for people, um, those silly, goofy moments of falling in love and like the questioning of like, does this person feel the same? This one, however, is a friends to lovers romance about friends who are very un a very unlikely pair, but they just really work together and about how they travel the world every summer together. And I I love this. This one is definitely my favorite Emily Henry and I can't believe I waited so long to read this one because I think this was like her second one or third one out and I've just kind of been putting it off and uh it was my favorite. It I was an emotional wreck reading this because I just felt like I could connect so much with the feelings that she was describing about like falling in love with someone and like the silliness and also I love to travel so it was fun to see like how they made the most of their traveling situations and I just loved those moments. I loved the way that it was done between like again the past and the present of falling in love. So this one was also a five out of five stars. So some people don't like her and that's fine but like I get it. I get it. I'm in I'm in there. I also read Monsters Born and Made and this was the last book part of my unhaul challenge that I did in April and I just didn't get around to it for the video but I did make sure to give it a read anyway and this is a very Hunger Games-esque in that like this is a society where there have been people who have been put into like particular jobs and we follow a character whose family has kind of been thrown into like one of the worst jobs and that they like have to basically raise these like sea creatures or whatever and then sell them into these games that happen. And the games are only kind of like for the royal families and whatnot. Like you get all this money and you get all these prizes and all that stuff. And what ends up happening is something terrible happens within this family and our main character is just so fed up with the way that they are treated, the way how the way the world is, and she decides that she just needs to keep her family alive at all costs and she enters the games. So this is like kind of frowned upon because never before has anyone of her status been able to enter um but she's gonna try her best 
But the thing is, a lot of people don't want her there, and it might cost her her life just to be entered, not even in compete to tame the Maristags and race the Maristags, and it's a competition, and of course some of their lives are at stake. Really loved seeing our character develop, and how fierce she becomes, and how strong she becomes, and um, also, you know, a little bit of like, kind of enemies to lovers, a little bit. I would say more of like, they were friends, and then they're not friends, and now he's like the number one competitor within this race, and of course only one person can win, but he was like basically raised to win this, and anyway, it's a good time. I gave it a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it, and I will be continuing this series. Ooh, then I read Adventure Zone, and this is a graphic novel that is based around a D&D &D campaign, and so we follow three characters. One is a wizard, one is a human, and I think one is a uh, maybe a bard, possibly. I I don't I don't remember off the top of my head okay um but this was just really fun to see how it was basically the beginning of the campaign and so you can see the over the table interactions that they have as well with like if can I do this in combat and if I roll this can I do this and them really getting their footing into their characters and their stories and it's goofy it's silly I love that because it feels very real of D&D it's not taking itself seriously at all and I just felt like it was a really good intro to if you've never even played D&D or if you're a new D&D player like me then I think that this is a really good intro but I think even veterans of D&D will enjoy this because I feel like it will be a little nostalgic in a way. Really fun. Um, and of course, it continues and I will be continuing the series as well. I gave, I gave this a 3.5 enjoyable. Took me a little bit to get into, I think just because as a D&D campaign does, it kind of jumps around a little bit. Um, but that was really my only critique of it. And just like, obviously, now that I know the characters, it will be easier to get into. I also read The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers and Other Gruesome Tales. And this is by Jen Campbell, who is also a booktuber. And this is stunning. This looks at different uh, stories and myths and fables from different cultures and kind of really brings back the darkness that is in them because so many folk tales and fairy tales are really dark gruesome stories and this revisits that. These are incredibly short like two to three pages. Um, it's big fun. It is more for for kids um, but there's illustrations all throughout it as well. Really stunning and really fun. I really enjoyed this. I would read like basically a story a night. I've been reading this over a couple months and I just thought it was enjoyable. I did rate this a 3.5. I don't think at the end of the day I'm the target audience. Again, I do think this is more for younger audiences, but I did love seeing the different stories across different cultures and like just the eerie things that they like considered scary or things that were I would have never thought of or things that I didn't realize like the origin of. So some of them were super scary and then other ones were just kind of like, what? This is so weird, but I loved it. Um, it's so, it was just so fun. So Jen also really wanted to focus on like the villain isn't fat or ugly. Disabilities aren't considered a bad thing. So I know she was really focusing on a lot of stories within that as well. Beautiful book to own, if anything. And I think it's a really fun book as well. I read a duology. I believe it's a duology. I'm kind of sad if it is a duology, but I'm pretty sure. A Song for the Wild Bill and a Prayer for the Crown Sky or something like that. Anyway, it's a duology and it is about a monk who decides they don't want to be a monk anymore, basically. And they're going to go sell tea because they want to explore the world. They want to see the world. And in this world, the, it's kind of been divided in that the humans have part of the world and then the robots have a different part of the world. For some reason, the robots have a consciousness and they have been told that they can have the wild and humans will not intercept that because they don't want the hu the robots don't want to do the things for the humans. And that's fine. They understand that. So they go their separate ways and no one makes contact with the other. That is until our monk friend who's selling tea is like, I just want to hear the crickets and I need to go to the wild to do that. So they go to the wild and they end up running into a robot. And the robot is so quirky and cute and fun and smart and just like my new favorite comfort character. And it is about them traveling the world to get a better understanding of what it is that they want 
what are they looking for? What is going to give them the validation of their being? And it's a really beautiful story about nature as well. A beautiful story about like accepting yourself and accepting um, kind of like your goals in life and your reasoning for being in a way um, without being too heavy in the topics. And it feels very lighthearted in the most perfect ways. I gave these both five out of five stars. They're new all-time favorites. They are so beautiful. I could feel like these are great comfort reads, great cozy reads, just to read time and time again. So this is, this is the star. These are the stars here. The Black Tongue Thief on a Road Trip. And I read The Black Tongue Thief in one sitting, and it was fantastic. I don't even know if I know how to properly. This is a more high fantasy world and we follow a character who has kind of been like raised to be a thief in a way, has gone to this academy to be a thief, um, managed to escape the war that's happening because he became a thief, but he's also branded because of this and like people treat him differently because of this. And he's on the road and he meets this woman who decides to spare him his life and she is going to be his travel companion and she is a brute and she is glorious. She's very straight to the point about things and there is no messing around and she is determined that they need to go on this quest to do something for her queen. All of that and then along the way they also meet uh, what is a witch in the midst of all this and she also tags along and she is very smart um, and it is so, this is a romance story believe it or not in the midst of all this. <laughs> They are exploring all over. It's about the battles that they do. It's bloody. It's gory at times. They end up on a pirate ship, basically. And this was so... It was like everything I feel like I personally would have ever wanted in a fantasy book. We have some questionable main characters with some morally gray things, but for, like, moral reasons are happening. And I felt... I felt everything so deeply. The The plot twist got me because I didn't even know that I was supposed to be looking for plot twists in this. I was like so absorbed in these characters. Sometimes I forget that there's like world politics <laughs> and like things like that at play. Something that has a little bit more action and you want something that also is gorgeously written at times but also something that is a bit gory. <laughs> this. Try this one, The Black Tongue Thief. I gave this a four out of five stars, and I I know that there's another book coming out, but I think it's a prequel, which is really interesting to me because of the cliffhanger that this leaves off on, unless you're supposed to just live with that cliffhanger, because I could also see that being a thing. The same road trip, because I read that in one sitting, I then read Carmilla, because this was a shorter one. Also read this in one sitting, and this is... Okay. I have to, editing me has to come in here and talk about the fact that I go on to talk about this book and say that, you know, it's this book about this young girl, her father takes in this ward, and this girl is very weird in particular, but they become best friends, but then there's this plague taking over the town, and like, obviously, and we know that it's Carmilla the vampire, and I did this whole review as if I had read a retelling, because that's what I thought I read, not realizing until this moment that I read the original, so I spend the next three minutes complaining about how this brings nothing new to the table without knowing it was the first of its kind. This was fine. I gave it a 3.5. Ooh, then I read Delicious Monsters and this is a a book that follows two different points of views. We follow a young girl who can see ghosts. And her mother keeps talking about this this house that is going to save all their problems. So they go to move to this house, but something is up with the house. And she is not supposed to enter this house, but, like, something is going on. And then we also follow, years later, a podcast. And a girl running this podcast who wants to talk about specifically, like, missing black girls. And... Uh, just missing girls in general. So a body was found in this house and you find out that the body is connected to the young girl, but she is noted basically as like, it's kind of said that she confessed to like killing this girl, this body. 
in a way. Like, that's how it's framed. So you're like, what the hell? So you're following up to the point where this body is to be found. This young girl has been killed, but we're following the main character who is supposed to kill her. And you're like, how could this be? She's so lovely. She's so smart. Um, She's very um standoffish. She's very naive. And you're just like, I don't understand how this would happen. And so you're following up to that point of what went down. The premise of this is, is so lovely. And I wanted to love this so bad, especially because um, she's a plant lover. I'm a plant lover. So that we got lots of plant talk. And the, the, the uh, title, Delicious Monsters, is a play on Delicious Monstera. Beautiful. Beautiful work, can I say. But it just fails in execution for me. The podcast aspect doesn't really add anything at the end of the day. If anything, it ended up frustrating me because we were interviewing characters who would give us nothing. All of this drags on and on and on because of the podcast aspect. It ends up just, you are just learning the same information over and over and over again. You're also, you just get stuck on like a detail and the detail just goes on and on and on without providing anything new for a long period of time. I think that what occurred and how it all ends up coming to a head is very exciting. But at that point, I like just wanted the book to be done so by the time we got to that point yes it was a beautiful reveal but I couldn't appreciate it anymore because at that point I was just kind of frustrated to get there so I do think a lot of this could have been parsed down I think it was trying to bite off a little bit more than it could chew in the long run I know that it was probably trying to make like some commentary on like social aspects of this and missing girls and especially black missing girls and how they're very much uh looked over in the media and also like uh, uh re how relationships work um it was also dealing with abuse and sexual abuse and just like all these different layers and I think it was just trying to do a little bit too much and I think the aspects could have worked separately but not so well together so unfortunately even though it was beautifully written and I love the concept I just don't think that this did what I wanted it to do um so I gave it a three it was enjoyable for the most part. I just wish it had, I wish like this much of it was gone and it would have made a much more enjoyable. I mean, this is a big book. It would have just been a much more enjoyable experience. Yeah, this is how you lose the time war because everyone was talking about this because it blew up on Twitter. And I had to know because I've seen other people talk about this in the past and they talked about how much they loved it and they said, go into it not knowing a thing. So that's what I did. So do is that what you want to do? Because I do need to warn you of some things. First of all, this is sci-fi. This is time-bending sci-fi. I don't tend to like those things. Two, this is a writing style that will not be for everyone. It's incredibly beautiful and intricate and complicated. You're going to have to use some brain power. So then you get through the end and you realize you really didn't use enough brain power. And you're going to have to reread it in order to fully understand the beautiful complexity of this story. Also, this is a love story. Just saying. You're going to feel emotions. <laughs> you're going to work your brain and you're going to work your heart all at the same time. Do I think that this book is absolutely brilliant? Yes. Do I think it's for everyone? Absolutely not. Please know that you need to be the proper audience for this. Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy it. You're going to look at it. You're going to try to read it. And you're going to go, what the hell is this? You're going to be bored out of your mind if this writing style isn't for you. I gave this a 4.5. I do think upon a reread, I would give it a 5. Because there were some parts in this, I guessed. But then you don't really realize how intricate the whole thing until the very end. And then you're like, well, shit, there's so much I missed. They have to go back. Yeah, this like ba book basically needs a reread. You're going to get your money's worth out of this. So I personally, I gave it a 4.5. I think it's brilliant. I think upon a reread, I would give it a 5 because I would know what to look for. I would know what to expect. But I do think this also has the readability in that like you could read this five times and you're still going to find new things 
every time you read this. So this is definitely an annotation worthy book and I'm really glad that I picked it up. I now get the hype. I get it. It makes sense to me now. It's a very unique experience and I feel like we've all bonded now. Thanks. Okay, and then the last book I have to talk about is Babel. I read this for the 24 hour reading sprints and I didn't love it, which sucks because this is one of my five star prediction books. It is a dark academia book and it is all about um half Chinese boy who goes to live in London with his possible father and goes end up getting into the school of Babel which is very prestigious and it is basically a story about a kind of exposing academia and how academia only cares for itself and not so much like actual knowledge and just kind of stealing from different cultures it exposes all that and also exposes the racism within academia and also just within the world and how politics work and things like that. So we follow a character from childhood up until he is in the School of Babel learning about his experiences and how that has shaped him. Also learning about his friends. He has a very close knit group of friends because they are also minorities here at the school and so they all kind of feel connected and it is about that but there's also a rebellion happening a secret society in a way happening within this that kind of wants to get into Babel and really destroy it on the way out in a way from the inside out so there's a lot happening in this and you really do get a lot of like word meanings and how words have transformed over time which I really enjoyed because I have an English degree and I loved linguistics and learning about language and like where words are borrowed from and how they evolve. So like that was really fun. This book is so boring. <laughs> it's so boring and I know people love it and I had a really hard time with it. Unfortunately, it just didn't deliver in what I needed it to. It felt like these really important conversations were happening, but they were happening at a very surface level. It was just pointing out like some of the more obvious things I feel like in academia. And maybe it's because I've done a lot of anti-racist research and studying and learning and unlearning. And maybe that's why none of this was a surprise to me and why I didn't find it as gut-wrenching as I probably should have, um, but it's unfortunate that I know these things happen in the world. What's even more unfortunate is it's very bleak because these things still happen within the world and this is supposed to be a world in like Victorian London. So there is that. There is also a magic system in this that I do think is brilliant. The problem is because it uses words to create this magic system and how words are basically the foundation of society. But not only that, but like the borrowed cultures in words are the foundation of like white society. I love that. The problem is, is that the explanation of this magic society is dumbed down and it is explained, it's really kind of simple to understand, but for some reason it is explained time and time and time again, but it's not explained differently any time. So it's not like it's giving you a new perspective of the magic system or further expanding it. It's explained the same way over and over. Also, the characters... I know we're supposed to love them and feel for them, but I often just felt they were kind of flat to me, unfortunately, because we don't, we get a little bit of glimpses here and there. And there's also really random chapters from different point of views that are just like so out of tune and they kind of like jar you out of the book and the story because they just don't flow with the rest of it and they're just random. I'm ranting again. I'm ranting about I've already ranted about it once. I gave it a three. I understand the importance of the story. I enjoyed there were enjoyable aspects of the story but I think at the end of the day it just wasn't what I wanted from the story. I wanted something a little more action-packed. Maybe that was more underground. Maybe something that really deeply exposed things and I just I don't know this just didn't hit that for me in a way. Um maybe a more complicated, I don't know, maybe a more complicated world. I don't know what exactly I needed from this, but this just kind of didn't do it for me. So I'm not the first one who's had issues with like who is the book for and what exactly is it doing. So obviously it was going to come under a lot of criticism because it was very highly amped up and hyped up and talked about everywhere. So 
it is unfortunate very unfortunate anyway that is it that is those are the books that I have and I've been on a reading spree and I feel so good about it. I just can't stop devouring books thank you so much for watching and let me know what your favorite reads have been recently if you've read any of these how you feel about them let me know if I hated your fave or you hated my faves I'll appreciate it <laughs> Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!